Hello and welcome to today's Sunday Masterclass. Please forgive the noise in the background. Um, they're digging up my road if you can hear anything. I've tried waiting for them to stop, but you know, what can you do? Sooner or later you've got to get back to work, haven't you? So what I'm doing today is I'm actually going to draw my favorite marker for you. So that would be this one here. My friend bought it for me at a vegan food fair and it says, leave only footprints, kill only time. And I'm going to draw it today. And the reason I want to draw this marker today and the reason I'm actually bringing it in to show you is we're going to look at ellipses because recently in my nine days of sketching challenge, and that one's completely free, you'll find the link in the video description. The first challenge was to draw your favorite cup or mug. And as they came in, not all of them, but I found that about 90% of them had gotten the bottom curve, the bottom ellipse on the cup wrong. Now this was completely to be expected because this is something that everybody does. I'll explain why in a minute but before I point the camera downwards and start doing the drawing and explain how to do this correctly I want you to just have a think about ellipses so if you grab something like a cup or even a roll of tape anything that's got a circle and you put it let's sort of put it here so if we put it kind of directly in front of our eye line then you'll notice that it becomes sort of a straight line and as I move it down you'll see that this ellipse sort of becomes deeper and if this were transparent like a glass you would notice the same would happen as it went above the eye line, the ellipse would become deeper as well. So an ellipse at the eye line is straight, and then as it goes lower down below the eye line, it becomes more and more curved. Don't worry, it'll all become clear in a minute. So let's get started. I just want you to understand that principle. Have a look at it yourself because we're going to apply it to today's drawing. So before I draw this cup, let's have a little lesson in perspective. So I've got the real cup here, but you might wonder why I always use a photograph on YouTube. And that's because obviously I'm looking at this. If I place it on the uh, on the paper in front of me, it's easy for it to be off camera. I'll also be looking at it. You see, I'll be looking across at it, but you'll be looking down at it. And um, that would be a pretty easy thing to draw, wouldn't it? Just a circle. So let's think about this object. So you see it has a flat base. And here is where people go wrong because your brain knows that this is a flat base and it is sitting on a flat surface and therefore almost everybody will draw the bottom ellipse of a cup or mug either completely straight with corners and there are no corners on here no matter what angle I look at it from there are no corners here so there can't be a corner at the base so most people will draw either completely flat or they'll draw it flatter than the ellipse above. So let me show you, remembering what we looked at at the beginning of this video, why that's not possible. So here is your eye and you are looking at the cup or the mug. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that you'll be drawing a cup or a mug and it's on a table. So it's likely to be below your eye line. So your eye line is here and down here is the cup or the mug. So here's the top of the mug and then it comes down to the base. Now, what did we learn at the beginning? We learned that the further below or above the eye line, the deeper the ellipse. So when people, and I'll just get a pencil here so I can erase this, when people do this at the base of their cup, they're doing it because their brain is telling them that this is a flat object, a flat base, and it's sitting on a flat surface. But we learned at the beginning that the bottom ellipse is further down, further below our eye line than the top ellipse. So therefore, it must be deeper than this ellipse. Now, that is really hard to get your head around. Now, we can only see one side of the ellipse, of course, because this is not a transparent item, which makes it even harder to draw. But the truth is that it's actually going to be a deeper ellipse. So once we've actually got to drawing that in, and getting rid of the bit we can't see. Now we're going to get it looking correct and three-dimensional. So let's have a quick go at drawing this mug and I'll give you a few other hints as well for getting the proportions correct. 
So let's get started on this drawing. Now, I'm not going to do a full 100% finely finished, you know, shaded, perfect drawing. I'm just going to show you how to do the basics because frankly, um, I don't have time to go through a full drawing of a mug that I don't need when I have um, online courses to do and I'm trying to sort out a new website. So, but we're going to go through some principles, not only the ellipse, but we're gonna look at some other things that people do wrong. Forgive the pink stain that seems to have got on this uh, on this photograph. I don't know where that came from. All sorts of things go on on this table, very large table. Right, so what I'm gonna do first of all is define some parameters because where people go wrong is they would just you know start drawing your top ellipse here. Well, that's great, but you don't really know how big the mug is going to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define where it sits on the paper. And this doesn't matter how big or how small you're working. I've got a small scrap of paper here. You you know, I could work this size, I could say, well, it's not going to come higher than this, lower than this, and we'll keep it in this area here. And that gives me a way of really controlling how the image sits on the paper. So let's do that first of all. And I'm just going to make sure that it can't go off the sides here. Of course, I haven't got quite the proportions yet, but we're going to keep it in this space here. The next thing I want to do is look for some large proportions. So I want to think about, you know, if I were to look at the width this way, how much is taken up by the handle? I mean, you can see that this is obviously the most dominant feature. And I would say, you know, a quarter or less is the handle. So let's make that mark. So from here to here, we'll say that about this would be where the handle will start. The main thing I want to measure with this is how deep this is compared to how deep this is. We're not gonna just rely on our brain to sort this out because anything you look at is gonna be at some kind of angle and our brains tend to see things quite flat. So what I'm going to do without a ruler is I'm just going to pinch here and measure from here to here. And then I can just take this down and I see that there's actually more of the ellipse than there is of the cup itself and the cup takes up maybe four fifths of this half. So let's make some marks for that. So if I'm going from here to here, let's make a halfway mark and then let's go down a little bit and we'll say that our ellipse is going to fit in here. So we've got an ellipse that's gonna fit roughly here to here, here to here. Now, when I'm drawing the ellipse, what you don't want to do, which everybody who's a beginner does, is you don't want to try and do this. People dot because they think that it's going to be more accurate. They've got more control over the pencil. But what you end up with there is you end up with a shape that is both uneven and also has corners. So what you need to do instead is you need to make circles like this. Now I'm only really moving from the elbow and the shoulder. My wrist and my fingers are not moving. I do have another video all about ellipses that will show you know the whole top half of me so you can see actually how you should be doing this. So you'll see you get multiple lines, but they're going to be smooth and then you can just pick the one that fits the best. So let's do that. Now you can't see me, but I'm actually sat on a stool. I'm just about to stand up to do this because I just need to be able to move my arm freely and I'm doing something like this. Let's go a little bit bigger. And you see that I'm pressing really lightly so that I can erase anything I don't need. I hope my head did not get in the way of the camera there. What I'm going to do now is check this ellipse and then tidy it up. Now I've grabbed myself a set square, but you don't need a set square. If you've got a piece of printer paper or even you know your photograph, you can use the right angle here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a center line up because where people go wrong is they have you know the top ellipse and the bottom ellipse, which obviously we can only see part of, and they don't get them lined up. So you know one's here and then one's over here. The way to stop that from happening is to use a center line. And you don't have to measure where it is. I mean, you can if you want, you know. If you want to go this side to this side, we've got 13. So what's that? Six and a half. We could go here. But equally, you could just pick a point um, for your center because we're going to tidy that up anyway. And then I'm going to line this up with the bottom of my paper and I'm keeping these lines really light because they're all subject to being moved later. I'm going to remove this cat hair here. 
Cats also are, get involved on the big table. And what I'm going to do now is also take a center line across the other way, just for the ellipse. Again, you know, you can just judge it by eye if you want to. Let's do that rather than measuring. And again, from here, I'm going to take mine across here. And what we're doing is we're just checking that each corner of this ellipse looks quite similar. So when you do this, you'll instantly see if something's sort of majorly wrong, if one of these segments or these quarter segments looks quite different to the rest, you'll be able to see it easily. And then we're going to just kind of tidy this up. Remember that most mugs and glasses are, you know, imperfect. They're not completely symmetrical anyway. What you want to make sure, however, is that you get a circle here. And that doesn't matter, incidentally, if it's even really narrow, you know, if it's like this. There is no corner on this circular opening. Therefore, we can't have a corner in our picture. What I'm going to do now is I've decided that the base is down here somewhere. I'm going to keep those lines in for now. Now, as I said before, we would have a large ellipse here. I don't really need to plot that one. If I was doing something transparent like a glass, I would. What I'm going to do now is just have a look at the shape here. You know, is it straight? Does it curve? I think it's a little of both. And we can see that this sort of decal here is, you know, it bulges out slightly because it's raised on the surface of the mug. So let's get an idea of that. We've also got, you know, a little bit of a rim to think about within this picture. So I've got a bit of a bulge here for where that comes out, keeping this curved. And you might sort of say to yourself, well, this is quite a curvy mug, Michelle, but what if I've got you know, a really straight sided cup? Would there not be, you know, a straight edge or a corner down here? The answer is still no, because even if you have, you know, a straight sided mug, there's still going to be an ellipse in here that you possibly can't see if it's not transparent. And so what you need to do is you need to make sure that where the sides come down, they seamlessly go into this bottom curve. And how curved it is will depend on your viewpoint. But as I said, we're looking down on this. So mostly we have to assume that the bottom ellipse is bigger than the top ellipse. And in this way, you'll get things correct. So I'm going to take out these construction lines now because I'm happy with that and I don't need them anymore. So let's get rid of all of those. What I am going to do now is start putting the handle in. You see, we've still got this mark here. So we know roughly how that comes out. And just by eye, I'm going to start sketching that in, looking at, you know, how far down it comes and what shape it is. And you can also look at negative shapes, by which I mean, if you can't see the shape of the handle, then have a look at, you know, this inside shape and this outside shape. It can be a real help in getting things right. So I've got something like this going on. And again, we can we can adjust these later on if we need to. You can also sort of start to get these um, these details of things like edges and rims. I can do the same up here. I've also got a bit of a rim to this mug. Now, it's important to remember that as well as looking down at this, we're kind of looking across. So if you have a rim on something like this, it's going to be on this inside bit here. It's going to be narrower here and here because we're looking across it and it's foreshortened. It's going to be wider on these edges here. So it will be narrower as it comes in here. I can then get an idea of this decal here. Now this is a circle in real life, but of course it's going to be adjusted and changed by the fact that we're looking at things at perspective. So all I'm going to do for this is just judge where it is in relation to the other main elements. And that's why it's so important to do main elements first. And it's coming right over here. Again, I can look at negative shapes and see how much is left here. And we see it's really quite flattened and elongated. Now at this stage, I would typically do a little bit more cleaning up and adjusting. I don't think, for example, that this handle comes out quite far enough. So I'll probably adjust that a little more and just start getting the shape until I was 100% happy with it. What I'd want to do then is look at putting this lettering in. And this is somewhere that people also go wrong. So remember that lettering will follow the curve of the object it's on. And this one is even more 
tricky because it's not following the mug itself. It's not printed around here. Now, if it were printed around there, says she trying to find a clean piece of paper. So if we have our mug like this and we have some lettering on it, then that lettering is going to follow the perspective lines around this object, which will get narrower as they go to the sides. And so the text will be bigger here and smaller and closer together as it goes off to the sides. Now, the main thing I like to do when adding text is to give myself a guideline. So I'm going to give myself a guideline here for the base of the text. And I'm just doing this by observation. You see how it's a little wider here, gets very narrow at the edges and then comes wider around here. So I'm going to make that guideline. And this will give me something to sit my text on. Text nearly always goes wrong if you don't firstly have some guidelines and secondly, take some time to space it accurately. And then we've got this vegan word here that does follow more or less the curve of the mug. And again, we can put a line in for that. Now, when I say space the text accurately, what I mean is we've got the word footprints here. What I'm not going to do is start writing footprints and just travel across as if I were writing, you know, a shopping list. What I want to do instead is to judge how much space that takes up, find maybe a center point, which would probably be about here. And by center point, I mean not a center point between the amount of space, but a center point in the lettering. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So our space is going to be between five. So here. So what I'll do is I'll imagine that the F is going to start here and the S is going to end about here, I think. And then I'm going to find halfway, but it's going to be further to the left because of perspective. So let's go about here and then I'm going to try and put foot in here and the P and then I can come larger as I come round here. Obviously, I'll do that a little bit more carefully, but you see how it works so that we get our text in evenly. The same with this vegan word. I can see it starts about here. I've got this big ornate V with the leaf on, and then it finishes about here. And I then have four letters to fit in this space. I can sort of think it's going to be about halfway there. And then I can start writing this around. After I've got all of this sketched out, removed any construction lines or just any mistakes that I've made, then I'll start with actually doing some shading and filling everything in. You'll see here how the shadow goes inside, but it can also go around other areas. And if you're drawing something like a cup on its own, it's always a good idea as well to place a little bit of shadow underneath it because objects without any shadow whatsoever will appear to float in space. That's fine. We can have a flying cup if we want one. But if you want it to sit on the surface, you'll also want to just add, you know, a little bit of shadow to ground it.